It was like a burning ambition to, to do more and uh, learn more about uh, the aircraft, to learn more about how they were designed and uh, what you can do to improve technology. And, um, and I, I guess that was uh, why I, I wanted to, to, to get more education. Hello, Ryan. It's it's great to meet you here on Zoom. Same. So you are in Norway, aren't you? I'm in Norway, yes. Yeah, okay. I'm Norwegian. And uh, well, you've got such a great um, line of things that you do. You're a pilot. You're a aerospace engineer. You're a. Uh, do you do um, aerobatics as well? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. and and a test pilot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. So where did this love for aviation start for you? Yeah, I think it started very early with uh, with the interest in uh, in model airplanes when I was uh, young. And um, so I had a natural interest in how, how it all was uh, connected and how it, it worked. Mm. And, um, and it grew from there. There was nobody in my family that uh, flew. So, so I found this out myself. Amazing. I, but the, if you say model airplanes, were these these like a radio controlled or were you, just the models? It was just the models. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and I lived uh, not far from the airport, so I could uh, could see the airplanes fly when I was young. Yeah. And, um, and then I got uh, got my private pilot license, um, 17, 18 years old, and then um, went to university and continued flying while I was at the university. Well, this is what uh, what somebody else also told me is that you can get your license also uh, at the age of seventeen. You think that is so young? Yeah. Did you have your driver's license by that time? No, so I, I actually <laughs> flew aircraft uh, alone before I was allowed to to drive. Amazing, in, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. But now in Norway, um, how does it work when you want to do your private pilot license? You have to fund it yourself. Yeah. Uh, you have to fund it uh, yourself here. Uh, get some if you're very young. You have to get help from from your family. Uh, I guess. Uh, yeah. And your devices. and your parents they were quite um, okay with you pursuing yeah. this career. Yeah, because I I was doing motorcycle racing, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they figured that uh, flying was actually safer. So oh, okay. uh, they approved of the the change actually. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, so, so it seems that you enjoy these challenging sports. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Do you still si um, do motorcycle? No, I, I stopped. Oh, uh, you don't. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess that was part of the deal, uh, letting me fly. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But now you, you did your private pilot license and then you continued, um, you said to university. So that's the route you have to go to continue. Yeah, I went to university and got my first degree in, in mathematics. And uh, and while at the university, I I flew. I um, got my kind of first job there, uh, towing uh, gliders aloft. Uh, okay. So I, I flew the, the tug that, uh, that, um, that got the gliders airborne. So I did that during the weekends and got my flying hours um, to, to get further licenses. Well, this is the thing that I um, hear also from all the pilots that I speak to is this this um, time that you have to get your hours. So you have to think about some sort of way to fly, to get in the air, to get those hours. Was that difficult for you to, to do? No, I, I got this, um, this um, I did this flying while at university and uh, yeah. I also spent my um, some of my holidays uh, getting more flying done, and I, eventually I got my flight instructor license, and then I I could uh, teach other pilots and and get my hours flying. Okay, so that counts for you as hours as well if yeah. you're teaching. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. Mm. So and then and the mathematics that you studied was that specifically. Because of the flying, or uh, was it just an interest that you had? 
that was just an interest I had in in mathematics and um, and, and science. I guess I guess it was more an interest in in science, uh, learning how things uh, work, and uh, being curious about uh, about uh, mechanical science. Oh, I see. Okay, so then you, uh, uh, what was then the next step for you when you um, achieved your hours that you did? did? So you had the commercial license then and the next part? Yeah, and then I got a job at the airline flying charter um, in the Boeing 737, flying passengers. And um, I, I did that for, uh, for, for some years and then um, I wanted to, to move on. So I, um, I got um, uh, a research degree, a PhD um, from uh, Brunel University in London. And, um, and during that time, I, I got some expertise in flight testing. I did some courses in flight testing in the US. And um, then I... Uh, I um, started working in, in flight testing and aerospace engineering as well, in, in addition to to flying. But now, the for for many pilots, it's this goal to to become an airline pilot because it also takes a long time to get to that point. So, what was it then that you decided so that you wanted to move on from there? I I think I was very motivated to to. Do more than than the flying to to um, to work in engineering solve problems mm. and um, and it was like a, it was like a burning ambition to to do more and uh, learn more about uh, the aircraft to learn more about how they were designed and uh, what you can do to improve technology and um, and I, I guess that was uh, why I, I wanted to 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 get more education. So, and then the test pilot, if, if when you're a test pilot, what exactly does that entail, that job? What yeah. do you do as a test pilot? Well, as a test pilot, you can do, do many things. Um, and um, the test pilot is, is kind of a combination of an engineer and a pilot. Uh, you you work uh, with um, maybe with new technology and you, you have to... Uh, uh, test that um, the modification that has been done or the, the new technology that has uh, come you have to, to test it to see it, that it um, that it works and that it's safe it's also a position of responsibility because you are testing uh, aircraft to be safe for others to to fly them mm. so i've been working as a flight test engineer then you then you uh, maybe do a modification of a helicopter or an aircraft and you um, you have to make sure that it um, there is some certification specifications and you have to make sure that it, it, uh, it follows the certification specifications from the regulator mm. uh, but i have also done research where you 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 flight test to get data that you can use in research and uh, I've tested um, new built aircraft, uh, home built aircraft. And uh, also lately I've been testing electric aircraft, which is, is brand new technology. Really? Amazing. I didn't even think that that that, that existed. Yeah. yeah. But that now, do you, do you actually fly the, the aircraft or is it done in a simulator or how is it done, this test flying? Yeah, you actually fly the the aircraft, especially the the smaller ones. You have to fly them. There is no simulator that they exist, mm -hmm. and um, so, and but there is a lot of preparation. So there, you you do a lot of preparations before you you fly, and and that can include the simulator flying. But uh, but uh, many times, especially for the smaller electric aircraft, we we don't have simulators yet. So you actually have to test them. You have to do the first flight, which which. Uh, there is a lot of risk involved, but you have to manage that risk and make sure it's as uh, safe as it possibly can be. But I suppose you know now every little part of the aircraft before you get into that aircraft. Yeah, absolutely. There is um, you spend a lot of uh, time on the ground getting to know the aircraft before you you fly. So, so you actually. Um, you put your hands in there. You you see what's being done in in the aircraft. Yeah, but that must That's be amazing. But that but that must be part of the the trust thing you have to get up in the air. 
because you've been there and you saw what's what's what you are flying basically yeah 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 you just don't get in and then start and go you you do a lot of preparation and you know very well how everything is supposed to work because you've been part of the, the design process and um, so that that's the engineering part of uh, of being a test pilot that you have to have an understanding of uh, how the system is supposed to work now listen this might, it might sound like a very blunt question but um so basically you can build an aircraft you have the knowledge of all the different parts to put an aircraft together well, um, from an engineering viewpoint, I know how what what how you're supposed to design an aircraft. I have some mm -hmm. design knowledge, but I'm I'm not a mechanic, so so oh, okay. So I it's, yeah. it's me that uh, actually builds the aircraft, but um, but I I it like the, the test pilot is kind of the uh, the missing link you can say between the pilots and the engineers and the designers and the builders. So you are, you are in kind of in between there. You you work with the boat because you have to uh, work with on the pilot side uh, because uh, you have to know how it's supposed to to be operated and what the mission profile is. So you have to have knowledge about that. But you also have to have knowledge about um, the engineering and and the building and you have to uh, work with the chief engineer and. Uh, Okay. And well with them as well so it's important to be able to to speak well with uh, with the, all groups of people involved <laughs> yeah i'm just thinking now that that you have to communicate to everybody to see yeah you know, what is what is there but um so this is this is quite a challenge then to get the to do the the test pilot do you get nervous at times still yeah, I think you do get nervous. Uh, I mean, you're going to fly something for the very first time. And there is also, um, uh, there might be a lot of pressure involved, uh, getting the airplane to, to fly. And um, there might be like when we flew the electric aircraft for the first time, there was uh, media was involved. They, they wanted to oh. make, uh, make uh, something out of it, you know. Uh, so there is always uh, pressure and you get you get nervous so i think uh, you can't escape that so you just have to uh, you have to manage it you have to be able to 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 work with it and um, and um, make a good plan and uh, and, uh, and then it, it it kind of works works out we have like you uh, have a lot of preparation before doing something like that mm -hmm. but now the electric aircraft uh, is that the future I think for some, it might be the future for some applications. Um, I think there is some challenges involved uh, with electric aircraft. Um, and the main one is, is basically that uh, the batteries can't store that much energy. So, so it can't fly for a long time. Uh, so um, that that is something that is it's a huge challenge. Uh, but I think it's worthwhile to develop the technology because we see some benefits. One of the benefits is clearly renewable energy and that we have to use uh, less uh, fossil fuel. Other benefits is uh, is noise. Uh, they are very quiet. The electric aircraft. And uh, also we see uh, they are easy to operate and uh, there will be less maintenance uh, cost involved. So, so for oh, some, some applications like um, racing aircraft, aerobatic aircraft, maybe training aircraft, it, it can be worthwhile. And I think, I think it's important to develop the technology anyway. And uh, well, we'll meet some challenges, and maybe we'll see what works and what doesn't. And um, if the result is that it doesn't work, well, then then that is a result also. You have to you have to investigate. You have to yeah. you have to try and you have to develop. Yeah, that's true. Um, but the, you were saying now with aerobatics, you you also do aerobatics. Yeah. I do. I, I think when I was young and thinking about flying, it was like this aerobatics that I, I found really? very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, flying up in the sky and doing maneuvers and, and the freedom you get uh, when when doing loops and rolls and, and, and flying around. So so I became a aerobatic pilot, a aerobatic instructor. I teach other um, pilots to fly aerobatics. 
And um, and then from that, I went into display flying. So I've been displaying uh, nine different types of aircraft uh, on air shows. So that is one of the things I really, really like to do. Really? And you, you were mentioning that you flew the Spitfire or that you fly the Spitfire as well. Yeah. I fly the, the Mustang and the Spitfire uh, at air shows. Um, I've been doing that now for, um, for the, yeah, this is the fourth year I've been doing air shows in those aircraft. So I feel very privileged to be able to, yeah. to fly the legendary aircraft uh, with a lot of history and um, very popular aircraft at uh, air displays. Well, I I read some uh, information about the the design of the Spitfire that I find so fascinating of how it was designed and and the simple design of it, and I've also heard that uh, pilots say that they um, or, or mention that the Spitfire you always you almost put it on you just you don't get into the plane you put the Spitfire on that's how easy it flies or how how uh, comfortable it is to maneuver in the in the sky. That's uh, that's uh, true. It's it's really nice flying. It's a bit difficult to handle on the ground for the takeoff and the landing. It's a bit of a challenge, but when you go, get up in the air and it really goes, it's it's uh, fantastic. It it's really is you. It's like you have it on your back and you can just maneuver and uh, and do these uh, aerobatics. Uh, it's 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 really a joy flying the aircraft. I think that is a good description. Yeah, but how many Spitfires are there in in Norway? There is only one in Norway, and it's it's not a common aircraft. Um, there, I think there are about sixty worldwide that flies, mm-hmm. and many in the UK. But um, it, it, there is only one in in Scandinavia now, and that is the one I fly. Well, I've been uh, talking to Colonel Tony Smith in South Africa also because they are uh, busy restoring one of the. Spitfires in South Africa, and uh, so it's so interesting for me that these that this plane, you know, that people really want to fly this plane. They want to get it um, uh, in the air, and and they want to fly it. So this is why they're doing this the restoration project. Yeah, yeah. it's um, it's it's a legendary aircraft, and it's really nice to 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 keep them airworthy and and show them because. Um, they get a lot of attention and um, a lot of the spectators say that it's their favorite aircraft to, to watch. Mm-hmm. So so we always try to, to show the airplane in the best uh, possible way, the sights and sound of it. And um, I, I think it's a very uh, important concept in the display flying that we, we display the aircraft. It's, it's not a display of pilot skill. It's, it's a display of, of the aircraft. So we, we try to, to show the aircraft um, well yeah but now um now about your aerospace engineering this is uh, do you I, I just want to ask at this point do you have time in the day for anything because you're doing so much <laughs> yeah well, uh, i think i think i have uh um, aviation both as a job and uh, as a hobby you know so oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. so it is um this uh so i i, I really do a lot of uh, a lot of flying and if i have some free time i i maybe i do some flight instruction as well and uh, and I do the the training for the, the air shows. It, it's you have to put a lot of effort into it you know mm-hmm. to do the training and, and be ready for the season so the aerospace engineering is this to do with the with the test pilot, um, uh, the test flying. Mm. Yeah, it is. Okay. It is. Uh, yeah, because the aerospace engineering is a wide field, and and uh, but my expertise is in the in the in the test flying part of it. So. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. But this is this is so wonderful, and you, um, uh, yeah, it's uh, you inspire probably so many people with your with this broad way of of doing things you know and in your broad interest in aviation yeah i i hope uh, i i do inspire the the next next generations and uh, those coming to 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 look at the air shows and everything that um so i think we have to we have to um, move forward um, in aviation and develop new technology but we also have to i think it's also important to to um, to honor the past and uh, and the aviation history and uh, see what yeah. has 
gone before and how they did things and, and try to learn from the past and these old aircraft. Uh, because every time I, I fly a new type of aircraft, they, they teach me something about flying. So I think uh, I think both are um, are important. You have to you have to study the past and you have to study the history, but you also have to to look forward to the future. Well, the many pilots I've spoken to is the, the one line they all seem to say is keep learning, you know, keep keep trying and 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 learning and knowing more. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that's uh, that's that's why I'm so always interested in, in flying new aircraft because uh, they all teach me a lesson. All the different aircraft teach me something, and uh, and um, so so it's this uh, motivation to always always learn and always do something else. Yeah. Well, and the reason I also uh, like to speak to pilots is because I think we get into the airplane and go on holiday and we don't really know what goes on behind the scenes always you know and and all the testing you guys have to do and the the check rides and and everything so um it's great to have an insight also to see what you know about just the fact that that you were saying you know that the testing and that it's involving you really risking your life going up in the air yeah i mean um, it's um, if you look at aviation uh, in the history of aviation it's it's uh, we we have gotten where we have gotten like one step at a time and uh, mm -hmm. you have to uh, there is a lot of experimental testing that has been done and a lot of uh, Risks that have been taken by the test pilots and, and others to 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 get us where we are now, and we are improving technology every year to make um, the airplanes safer. So I think um, I think that's uh, the way aviation works. You you go there one step at a time, and you do a lot of testing to to get uh, get where we are now. And um, travel today is is very safe, and it's because. Uh, we have been able to to develop safe technologies to, to have in the airport. So what would your advice be for a young um, boy now coming up wanting to be a pilot? What would be something that that they have to get, take in mind? Because it's a long process and it's a long journey that you have to go before you at the end come to the pilot that you want to be. Yeah, it it is, and if you if you think about it like all at the, at one time, it's it's quite overwhelming. All you have to go through, and uh, and it it kind of uh, sounds almost impossible to to get there. Um, and many people will will tell you that it's very difficult and it's uh, it's a hard journey. But I think you have to just start somewhere. You have to get get involved in in the local flying club, maybe or the glider club. And you just have to to start somewhere and uh, take one step at at a time, and eventually you you will you will get there if you're if you are highly motivated and uh, and um, get all the skills you need and the knowledge you need. And I, one it's it's very important. The, the knowledge part is very important in aviation. Uh, so you just have to try and, and obtain that knowledge. So you have to be eager to learn. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be eager to learn and you have to have this burning ambition to to learn and be motivated to learn. Yeah. Well, it seems that uh, well, everybody I've spoken to in the in aviation industry have this very much this passion for flying and and um and this motivation and perseverance to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a common uh, common trait in in the pilot that they are yeah. working, working hard for a long time and uh, been very interested in, in what they do. It's very rarely that you meet someone that just like happened to be a pilot because they they just fell into it. I think most of them they they kind of wanted really wanted to be there. Mm. Yeah, that's true. But now, Ryan, what is your wish for the future? Well, I wish to be continue continue flying, and that we are able to to develop uh, the technology. Uh, and since I'm involved in electric aircraft, I really would like to see electric aircraft succeed. 
um, for for some applications for some short term missions. Uh, so in the next um, five years, I'm, I'm hoping we can can solve the problems and uh, and move on with the technology. Well, I'm very interested now. I'm going to try and, and read some more about this electric aircraft. I didn't know that um, that you've already done so much on that. But now, uh, just tell me what is the what is the cutoff age uh, for a pilot? What is the age that you cannot fly anymore? Well, I think it's uh, 65 is in Europe. Is is the age where you can't fly um, commercially? Where can you? Oh, wear okay. But you can still fly when you when you fly solo. Yeah, you can fly oh. for fun or or on your own time. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Continue at sixty five. You have to stop commercial flying. Yeah. So you can start when you're seventeen, and you can fly until you uh, can't fly anymore. <laughs> okay, so that's great to know. Uh, but thank you so much for your time. It was really so insightful talking to you. You really have a great passion for what you're doing. And um, and thank you so much for sharing your story with me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice talking to you. Yeah. Have a lovely day. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.